Hi, it's Jill Broadbent with Close to My Heart, and today I'm going to share with you our fourth and final video in our mixed media series. So if you have not had a chance, I invite you to go back and watch the first three videos in the series so that you can learn all things mixed media. We've shared lots of fun techniques over the past few weeks, and we hope that you will subscribe to our YouTube channel and ring that notification bell so that you never miss any of our creative tutorials. So today we're going to talk specifically about gloss sprays. Gloss sprays are an opaque acrylic spray and they dry down with a really fun sheen to them. So they're a really awesome product to use. And I've got a few sample cards here, a layout that we're going to demo, and give you some really fun ideas for how you can utilize these products. So the first thing I wanna do is show you just the basics. You can basically <laughs> spray this down and let it be an accent and an detail on your page. So you can see here on this layout behind our clouds, we have some fun splatters and that's using this turquoise color of the gloss accent spray. And it's going to give you just a nice background to let everything else come to the surface on this project. So I've got white on white clouds, but by putting that blue behind, it kind of creates a nice sky background. And here it is again on the second page of this layout. In this area right here, you can see how that looks. So we're going to just simply grab a piece of white daisy cardstock and we're going to spray. It's so fun, it's so easy, and you're just going to start by making sure that you shake these really well. There's a little ball inside. You can see that the product does because it's a nice thick opacity. It does kind of settle to the bottom. So just like you would a can of spray paint, you're going to want to shake it really well and get that color all mixed in. <clears throat> and then you're simply going to spray where you want that color to be. So I wanna show you a few different things. You can see that just one soft squirt mid-range gave me this kind of detail. And you can see it's going to be a little splotchy, it's going to be a little splattery around the edges, but it's going to dry nice and shiny, and that color is really intense payoff. So let me show you then too, you can just come higher on your project and spray, and do you see how much more subtle that is? That was like half a squirt. So not even pushing my nozzle all the way down and raising it a lot higher on my project, I'm able to get a wider, softer splatter. Then if I come close to the project, so I'm really like my hand is on my work surface and I spray, you can see that I'm going to get a really solid, intense amount of color. Then again, the mid range would be kind of just a few inches off the project and spraying, you can move that as you go. So I wanna show you those so that you can see that you get to kind of control and manipulate where that color goes. So this is mid range and just a nice soft solid squirt. Same with this right here. And then I would just moved it around as I finished off that um, squirt and was able to get just that variance in that splatter. This is by holding it up just about six inches off the project, project and then doing about a half a squirt, just letting just a little bit of that product out and you're able to get that nice, soft, subtle splatter effect. And then if you want a real punch of color or a real splatter, go right directly to the project, squirt all the way down and you'll get a really intense color. And you also see you still get that overspray, which is really fun as well. Another thing you can do with these gloss sprays is you can just apply a little bit of it to your all-purpose mat. This is such a great tool for being able to use with mixed media. And then you can grab it with a paintbrush or um, a water brush and pick it up and splatter it on your project like this if you want a little more control. It's another way to just be able to apply that product in a different look and format. So you can see this is just giving me really soft, subtle splatters and I can control where that is. Where as I, if I come up high and spray, it's going to cover a large area of the splatter. This is going to give me a more controlled splatter in an area that I might want just that color. So lots of different ways just to squirt the bottle to get a lot of different looks. All right, let's take a look at this adorable card. You can see we've got a lot going on in this background. It came together by just adding a few squirts of our turquoise gloss spray. So again, you can make this card. It's adorable with all those details. 
by just using a nice solid piece of cardstock, but adding that gloss spray really gives it that nice underwater effect and some of that ocean feel. So you're just going to take your darker color cardstock and we're going to use turquoise. I'm going to come about midway and squirt about a half a squirt. Then I'm gonna come a little closer and squirt again. And you can add as little or as much of this as you want. I'm gonna come a little higher and you can see I'm getting lots of different types of splatters by how I control my spray. So this was coming up a little higher and then coming a little closer, but look how dense and detailed this color is on a dark colored cardstock. These work really well even on black cardstock. It's really fun because the color stays as opaque and as intense as it looks in the bottle when it dries and you also get the shine. So I'm gonna show you the finished card up close as well. See how when it's dry, that shine is all added and you just have all of this awesome speckled detail. Let's take a look at another sample and this is using the gloss sprays through a stencil. Now I want you to see this close up so that you can see the detail and the shine. Can you catch all that shine that comes off of this when it's dry? But can you also see that it doesn't stay perfectly within the stencil marks? Because this is a wet liquid product versus something that has a little more thickness to it, you don't have a, as much total control about it not coming under the lines a little bit, and that's okay. It's just to create a really fun textured detail. So to achieve this look, I'm going to take a stencil and a piece of watercolor paper, and I'm going to lay my stencil on top, and I'm just going to tack that stencil down with a little bit of tape. You can use washi tape, just something to hold it in place. And then I'm going to grab the line spray. You can see this one is so vibrant and gorgeous, just as all four of them are. They work so well together or independently. They're just so beautiful. And the pigment is such a strong color that you don't need very many squirts at all to get the color that you need here. So I've just held it about five or six inches above my project and gave it a nice subtle misting. Then you can just peel back the stencil and reveal your piece. And you can see here, we have a little bit of that over bleed and that's totally fine. Especially if you're making a card, you can cover that little space. But I think that's part of the fun of the mixed media is that you're always going to get little splotches or areas that are imperfect because you're using this kind of medium. It's a liquid spray and you just don't have complete control, but it does give you a really cool pattern and detail. All right, here's our last sample, and you can see I've created an entire background by just using the sprays. So look at the shine on this. You can see that the entire card looks glossy, and that's just because of the amount of sprays that we've layered up. So I've used three different colors to really create this fun splattered background. I'm gonna show you how to do that. I'm using watercolor paper. I think it just really helps even hold the color even more intense and it also helps them to mix together really well. So I'm gonna start with Ocean. This is a really pretty darker turquoise. And the key to this is working with your darkest colors first and then build it up. So I'm gonna start with Ocean and I'm just spraying. Again, I'm about six inches above my project and I'm giving a really light mist. I'm gonna show you each layer as we go so you can see what we're trying to achieve here. So there's my ocean sprays, really light because I held it up high and was able to give it just a nice subtle color which almost kind of gives me a background. Now I can come a little closer and in some areas add more intense color. I'm also not squirting my nozzle all the way down. I'm kind of going about halfway as it starts to come out. If I see that I've got enough color and coverage there, then I can stop. So I've added Ocean, again, in a nice overlay color, and then come through with some of the more detailed, more splattery looks. And then we're going to come in with Turquoise. And we'll do something similar. I'm also going to kind of choose the areas where I want that color to go. So I've added just more layers and some small splatters. 
So you can see how that's all starting to come together. And then to finish it off, we'll add some of this fuchsia. It is such a beautiful hot pink magenta tone. And when you mix it with these other colors, look at that. Look how cool. And so with this one, because I don't want any areas to be solid pink, I want this to be the accent. I'm holding it mid-range and I'm just giving it very light, soft squirts so that it comes out in less of a mist and more of little bursts. And you can see starting to warp because it's getting really saturated, but it'll dry and you can also heat set this to dry it. You can also heat set in between the layers if you don't want the colors to mix as much. So you have a few different options. You could have done just the ocean, heat set that, and then added the blue, and then the colors won't necessarily blend together. But if you want that blend, then do it while they're wet. You can see how these are starting to mix together right in here, which I think is a really cool effect. So there's just multiple ways that you can achieve the different looks, but I've created an entire background just by spraying and mixing these fun gloss sprays. And then when they dry, they will be shiny and gorgeous and just be such an eye-catching piece to your artwork. So I hope this video has helped you to see the possibilities with our gloss sprays. They are so fun and add so much vibrancy to your projects. So be sure to give them a try. And if you want to find them, we've linked all the products we've used today down below in the description box. Thank you so much for joining us and be sure to subscribe to all of the Close to My Heart YouTube videos.